Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, my name is Andrew Hu, I use they, them, and I am going to be talking to you a little bit today about um, my role, like the introduction of my role as an educational psychology teacher and um, reading and editing Wikipedia. So um, I'm relatively new to, to Wikipedia. I only started editing a couple of years ago, and I'm originally from the Pacific Northwest, so I've, I've edited a lot of Pacific Northwest articles, stuff about indigenous people in the Pacific Northwest, and I love languages. Um, but right now I'm a PhD candidate in studying educational psychology and educational technology at Michigan State. And at, at the university, I teach a class about learning and teaching, basically an introduction to educational psychology, where we ask students like, what is learning? How can you be an effective teacher? And even if you're not a teacher education, if you, even if you're not studying to be a teacher, um, how can we get better at learning and teaching ourselves? So, a um, couple questions, because uh, I want to make this, this session useful for everybody here. Um, does anybody, like, does anybody, like, have things that they're curious about or things that, that, that brought them here, things that you're wondering? Does anybody want to share? Because um, I can talk about, you know, I have some, some things planned. I can talk about like the theory of social constructivism, how we're using that in my class, and like how I try to integrate that into my, my class. But, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, tell us what you do. Like we can learn <laughs> about theory from Wikimedia, but uh, tell us more about what you actually do in your class. Mm, what I do in my class. So uh, it's a teacher education class, but it's open to everybody. So I get an eclectic mix of people who want to be elementary school teachers, secondary teachers, or people who are just like in business, or maybe you're just looking for an elective. But what I'm trying to engage students in, in thinking about is um, learning and teaching is, is such a fundamentally complex thing and a very human thing, very subjective. So what do we believe about, you know, what various theories can we use to help us understand how we learn? and how we can go about teaching, um, and what kind of evidence and personal experiences um, can we use to, to help argue about what we think the best approach to, to teaching and learning is. Because there isn't any best approach, but we all um, we all want to be more effective learners and teachers. Yeah. What are you um, talking about in your classes about the use of Wikipedia as a tool in um, education? I know like the secondary school teacher, uh -huh. and we have many different conversations about that. But I, I like to know. Yeah, I'd like to do um, more. I'm restricted by my curriculum, so I, I'm going to show you kind of what I did in my class, but I, I basically just did like one lesson on it. Um, yeah, but uh, but I, I tried to connect Wikipedia to all the things that we learned earlier in the class, like the like social constructivist theory. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I just wanted to say why I was interested in this. But yeah. Also, what, what, for me, like Wikipedia is sort of this, I don't know, construction of truth, I guess. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. You don't necessarily know what the truth is, but it's going to be on Wikipedia. Right. It's there. Right. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I was just interested in like if there was some way to view Wikipedia as a social construct. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, totally. Anything else? I just admire the truth. At, you've turned this into a constructivist. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm trying to trying to walk the walk. Yeah, gonna get to that in just a second. Perfect segue. Um, right. So the, so so let's talk about the the theory. What do I mean by social constructivism? So first, I'm going to start with uh, in philosophy, epistemology is the study of knowledge. So we we say like, okay, what do we know? How do we know it? How do we even like, I don't even think about this. So, so like a, a common uh, way that I've heard people um, describe this that's a little bit more accessible is, you know, ways of knowing. So how do we go about knowing different things? Um, and so there's many different kinds of uh, epistemological theories, but to, to oversimplify it, there's, there's two camps that I'm going to, to, to contrast. There's the realism and the constructivist, the realist and the constructivist. So the realists are like, there is a fundamental truth to reality and we can measure it, right? So this came out of like, for example, um, like in, in the West, there were a lot of, um, you know, like this uh, scientific, like the enlightenment revolution, people are like, we're going to, to very concretely try and measure reality and describe what's happening so that we can better understand what, what's happening. What, how do we know the things that we know? The constructivists, by contrast, are kind of arguing that 
you know, all reality is is our perception of it, right? There's there are many different ways to look at the same, uh, you know, to look at the same reality and view it differently and to know different things about it using different ways of knowing. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I, I forgot this. Um, but so so some of the the big contrasts between these are that um, the constructivists believe that reality is defined by how we perceive it. And the way that we describe reality is biased by our perspective, all the things that we've experienced before. Um, and so that's important to, to understand how constructivism applies to psychology. So these are two psychologists that I teach in my class, uh, Jean Piaget and Lev Vygotsky. So um, they try to uh, apply uh, constructivism to psychology um, by saying, first there's Piaget, and he said, well, well, children construct these schemas of what they see in the world, and how they learn is that they modify their schemas by uh, uh, accepting new information. They, they're in a state of disequilibrium where something doesn't quite make sense in their worldview, and then they modify their schema to have a more advanced understanding of the world. So for example, uh, if you have a child that has, uh, the family has like a pet dog, and then they're like, okay, a dog is like an animal with four legs. And then they go to somebody else's house and then they have a cat and they're like, that's a dog. But then the dog doesn't, you know, their dog doesn't behave in exactly the same way. And then they learn more information and they're like, oh, okay, so there's multiple different kinds of like four-legged animals, right? Um, now, Vygotsky uh, expanded on Piaget um, by, by saying, okay, children use these tools, or like all people, we use these tools to help us understand reality, both physical tools, um, which, are, which are very important, but also symbolic tools. So the, the concept of writing itself is a symbolic tool that we use to help us construct our understanding of reality. We are able to uh, 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 access more advanced cognitive processes because we have symbolic tools like writing. Um, and and uh, but, but Vygotsky and Piaget were uh, kind of uh, contrasted in the way that uh, they believe that learning happens. So um, Piaget believes like, okay, children develop and then their brain just kind of like explodes and spurts and then, they, and then they're now able to, to do more advanced cognition. Whereas Vygotsky thinks, okay, as children learn more advanced things, then their brain, that helps their brains develop and then they're able to do more advanced thinking. Um, and this is kind of the stuff that I teach in my course. Uh, so Vygotsky believed that the, ch the children are influenced by more knowledgeable others. Um, and specifically, he thought that all cognition is mediated. So whenever we think about something, we're being affected by the, the tools that we're using. Um, and so, so writing itself is, is one of the most fundamental symbolic tools, because when we're able to write something down, we're able to modify our thinking about it. You know, you think about how when you're when you're able to write down your thoughts, you're able to uh, reconceptualize them, and that actually influences the way that you think about things. Um, and so Wikipedia is an example of a tool where we use uh, writing and other things like images um, and and structure, you know, different ways that we structure our writing as a tool to influence how we think about the, the fundamental concept, right? So Wikipedia is an encyclopedia where each article refers to a different concept in reality. Then the article itself is a tool that we use to modify our conception of that of that uh, reality underwriting it. Now, Vygotsky also had this very important um, theory called the zone of proximal development, where humans gain cognitive abilities by being helped by a more knowledgeable other to do things that they otherwise could not have done themselves, um, but they are able to accomplish now with help. Um, now, there's still things that they they can't do even with help, right? So if you have like a three-year-old, you know, even, no matter how much you help them, they probably can't learn calculus, but they might be able to do finger math, right? You might be able to, to help them think in a new way. Um, and so these tools, uh, um, these tools help uh, uh, young people, well, people uh, of all ages expand their cognition by using the tools to help them grow in their cognitive abilities. I mean, so Wikipedia is an example of a tool that we can use to help us not just learn more like knowledge in, in the sense of like random facts and things, but expand the ways that we think. So Wikipedia, um, I believe, is a, is a very good example of a tool, uh, example of a tool that we use to socially construct knowledge, right? Because 
we can all read Wikipedia um, and reading positions us as, as a learner, right? So like in this example, the zone of practical development, we're the learner here in the center and then Wikipedia is a tool that's helping us expand our cognitive abilities. But also if we um, edit and add citations and contribute with other um, talk other contributors on the talk page, we're actually positioning ourselves as the more knowledgeable other, the person who is helping other people expand their cognition in this zone of proximal development. Okay, so I think that's my so so that's my stuff about the theory behind this um, constructivist psychological theory. Um, does anybody have any like questions or thoughts that's coming up right now? Because I just kind of threw a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, the idea is more into the individual there. Yes. Yes. And because he is more into the social area. Right. So when you go into the web and you browse only the web, even Wikipedia, it is an individual mm -hmm. activity. But when you correct, edit, mm -hmm. interact, come to this event, this it, it becomes social. Mm -hmm. So that that I would add to your yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that is like the, the social part of learning is not reading Wikipedia, but intervening or correcting everything, adding and talking to others. That yeah, exactly. We, we want people to become social in their interactions with Wikipedia instead of just learning. Yes. So, just when in Florida, the librarian, yeah. and, um, I have to say thank you. It's just something that I just connected something in my mind, which is I've led students on study abroad. Mm -hmm. and I, Follow Wikipedia, actually, the class about Wikipedia. And I've experienced similar um, mm. teaching moments in both spheres where it just seems students jump so much cognitively in each environment. But I think it has to do with what you're saying. It's mm. more discussing when they're actually messing around in social construction with information versus when they're just so passive in class. Yes, yes, exactly. We we want education to move students past just, just um, um, just reading, but but um, but to get them to, to be writers. Um, so so what I'm just going to talk about the the class that I taught um, in my uh, my educational psychology class um, is it was at the end of the semester. So we spent the whole semester talking about like Piaget and Vygotsky and zone proximal development, all these different kinds of um, learning theories. And now I'm going to try and connect this uh, Wikipedia to. Um, all those different theories. So here's some slides that I um, that from this lesson that I gave. Um, so first, I, I engage students and talk about like, okay, how do you use Wikipedia? Like, what's been your experience with it? We have them discuss in small groups, um, and I ask them some questions about like, okay, what do you basic questions like, what are you searching for? What do you use the information for? But also, how do you verify truth, right? Because I'm sure all of our students have been, you know, they've had teachers who have like. At least if they grew up in my in 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 my age demographic, they have teachers who have been like, "Don't use Wikipedia because it's wrong," um, or like anybody could just put anything on it here. Um, but so I'm connecting it to the the constructivist learning theory, but also some other things that we talked about in in my class, like motivation and interest, how like students are motivated to do things because of different you know factors about what they're influenced by, and so when you're motivated to to edit an article, it could you know help you more. Um, and then there's obviously, we all have cognitive biases and, and social biases. So how does that influence um, the, the contributions and, and what we read on Wikipedia? Um, so I was like trying to give them the pitch. You should try contributing to Wikipedia. Um, and so if we believe that Wikipedia is a, is a constructivist tool to help us um, uh, you know, understand re reality, then by contributing to Wikipedia, we contribute to this conversation and we influence a lot of people. Um, and it also in, uh, uh, helps you um, use those higher level cognitive processes where you're analyzing information, you're thinking about the, um, the, the how do you know this, how do you verify the truth of this, um, and we uh, and and by contributing to Wikipedia, um, we help inform others and ourselves and and try and combat misinformation. Um, so trying to I was then I did a little activity where I was like, okay, we're gonna just try like edit, do some small edits to Wikipedia. Um, so try and like find things that you're passionate about and think about how, how could you um, <clears throat> contribute to those pages. So I was like, here's some, you know, simple it, uh, introductions to how to edit Wikipedia. And then like, I was like, go just try it. Um, and this did not really go that well because 
people were like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Not just like how to edit, but they were like, I don't know, what should I do? What, what, should, what should I edit? Like, what do I even have to contribute, right? Because the students are so used to being positioned as like passive learners where it's like, I'm absorbing information. So when I go to Wikipedia, I'm like finding the information that I need and then I leave. Um, the idea that they could actually contribute and influence Wikipedia was very new to them. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about the, the bias stuff because um, we, we talked about um, bias throughout the course, um, different ways that people can be biased. Um, so I shared the, with them this, this article about kind of like indigenous um, perspectives on Native American people um, and, and uh, kind of like the, the, the tension between people with different epistemological perspectives of like, how do we talk about um, indigenous people um, and like what is what is the truth, um, right? It's like what is we we have like various different biases coming in here, and so like how how do we um, write you know write the 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 truth? What's in Wikipedia about indigenous people? Um, and so I gave this example of how I'm from Seattle, um, so I've like edited the the page of Chief Siach, who's the the person that Seattle's named after, um, and this person added the category to this page: genocide perpetrators. Okay, so this puts Chief Seattle in the same category as like Hitler. Um, and you wonder like, you know, why is that? Well, they're basing this off of a citation of this one, like uh, one website, I forget exactly what it was, but it said they had this, the, the Duwamish people that he led had like a battle with another tribe and they like killed a lot of people in the other tribe. So in the article it said, that's genocide. But who defines what genocide is? Right. And and so this is like, you know, the question. Well, and then I just wanted to generally in, uh, engage students in thinking about, you know, how might the articles that you read um, be be biased and how might that bias cause harm in the real world? Um, and I talked about the concept of verifiability because this is something that was all new to them. Right. They haven't been editing before. Um, the idea that something might be false, but if it's verifiable, you can put it on Wikipedia. So asking them to think about, okay, is it is it fair for them, for that editor to put the label genocide perpetrators on Chief Siach page um, just because there was one one website where it said this that this thing that they did engaged in was was genocide, right? Um, I talked about some some other you know, uh, cool initiatives in Wikipedia to try and make it better, like the Women in Red, and um, also like the Wiki Project, um, uh, Wiki Project, like Indigenous People of North America and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to to hopefully inspire them to to try editing Wikipedia. But it was a big challenge because um, students had a really hard time getting started, regardless of whether they were able to edit or not. It's just they were just like, what should I be doing? Um, they're kind of stuck on that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's basically, oh, and I was I was just gonna say, if I had to do it again, I would probably try and modify the curriculum a bit more so I could and sprinkle in some Wikipedia throughout the course and then it would ease them into editing. They would be much better prepared to do that. Um, but this uh, introducing um, Wikipedia into, you can do it in a whole bunch of different classes, like information science, history of technology, science and technology studies, um, and I think this would be really cool if you did like um, uh, talked about like data science is like because there's so much harvesting of data from, from Wikipedia is like to what extent is that useful, right? Um, so yeah, that's my presentation. Uh, thanks. Let's have uh, any questions. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of attributed uh, the failure of students to know even where to start. Um, well, maybe you can repeat that so I don't misstate uh, what I heard. I think they were um, they were stuck on the idea of what should I contribute? What, what can I contribute to Wikipedia? What what could I possibly add to Wikipedia? Because they hadn't thought about, they hadn't positioned themselves as a contributor before, only as like a reader. I, I'm, I would be curious if students would have an equal uh, failure um, to a site like Reddit, right? Like, are there are, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, is is this is that failure something that speaks to them as learners and how they've been 
and and how they've been taught and how the educational system has kind of uh, crafted them to expect mm -hmm. certain kinds of of pieces, or is that something uh, particular to Wikipedia and how we do or don't make uh, that editing step uh, possible, practical, enticing? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, I didn't expect you to have an answer. Right, right. Yeah, but good, good for discussion. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I guess we're getting into the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, here, okay, let me move on. Yeah, yeah. just you more. Know, I want to go back to your yeah. slide about mediated copyright. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of tools. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, in this connection way. with more knowledgeable others and grown up customer development. Yeah, um, so <laughs> I'm not an expert on this theory uh, exactly, but um, the idea is that for, for Vygotsky, um, all cognition is mediated by tools. So whenever we're thinking, um, we're using a tool. Even if we're not using a physical tool, he says, these tools have been internalized into our cognitive processes, right? So for example, with a, with a child who's just learning arithmetic, maybe that they have to use some like, you know, counting with some, some little beads or like using the finger math, but then that process is internalized into their brain. So they no longer need, they no longer need a physical tool, but they're still using um, uh, tool in their mind. Um, yeah, and, and the zone of proximal development, getting help from a more knowledgeable other helps them internalize um, that sort of uh, mediated cognition. Is that helpful? Thanks. Okay, okay. In the back. Um, so yeah, you mentioned you know, you're teaching now on um, thinking about this new generation of like technology in the fourth grade. I do want to add this to graffiti that was like 20. Yeah, 20 years ago. And my teacher did not let us know, but like that's just kind of funny. Um, mm -hmm. But it still was kind of like they do not use this as a source to right. on your paper. They yeah. use the initials of the author. Um, do you see like the perception of Wikipedia changing in like different generations? And then on top of that, like one thing I worry about and you know, I'm worried is that you know, do you think there can be like a false sense of like a teacher of like Okay, I learned this on Wikipedia, that doesn't show me that I know it. Maybe it's true knowledge, but it's you know, meant to be overconfident about Wikipedia. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure, but I think that the 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 perception of Wikipedia is changing slowly over time. I think that like my students who I have right now who are like born in the 21st century, um, most of them like do go to Wikipedia, although very recently that may be changing thanks to like ChatGPT and stuff. Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I taught the first year uh, writing comp mm -hmm. composition for uh, you know, English 101. Mm -hmm. And um, I want, I, those students even have trouble choosing essay topics. Yes. And so, and then you put on, I'm wondering if it may, there's that issue, yeah. but yeah. they don't, they don't have, well, what should I write about? Yeah. Will you, and not having the confidence that, well, you know a lot. Mm -hmm. like, Know that, and then on top of that, all of the editing technology and processes that you have to know to edit an article on Wikipedia. So, there's it makes it both those things complicate each other. Yeah. Well, they don't have the tools to choose a topic, and much less choose a topic on Wikipedia, yes. and then learn all of the but it's complicated and it's very yeah. much. I think that's definitely that's definitely at play. Oh, uh, wonderful presentation. Is there anything new or surprising, unexpected uh, that you learned from this process and from why you were? Mm, yeah, I, I think that, uh, like like I said, the way that I, I would want to do this in the future is I would want to kind of like ramp students up over time into getting more familiar with, um, you know, reading Wikipedia and then being able to edit Wikipedia and, and engaging with those like higher level cognitive processes. I really wish that I had like so much control over like curriculum so that I could like design all these like fun classes where we would like integrate this into like educational psychology or like talk about Wikipedia as a technology in the context of um, like history of technology or something like that. So I guess I'm just excited about um, what I would do in the future if, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm I'm on the job market now looking for a teaching job. So hopefully, hopefully if I get a cool teaching job, then I'll get to do that. <laughs> Thanks.
we'll plug myself in the Google for it. Um, I have written an article called the Fault Center in Wikipedia in the classroom, and it's much to our surprise been cited maybe 10 times already in the year. Uh, and so I'm pretty familiar with the literature at this moment. And I just want to say I looked, and there is no article of social constructivism in Wikipedia in the title. And you should write. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I should. I should. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to say what I was going to say earlier. Yeah. But, um, so the, um, the uh, what is it? So, so I was going to some talks yesterday, and they were essentially saying that it's a technical issue with the way Wikipedia is designed. Is it was designed for reading, like they mm -hmm. designed the website and stuff, mm -hmm. the mobile apps, that sort of thing. And so that like the reason, or well, one of the reasons probably there's there's multiple reasons. <laughs> Uh, but like I think one of the reasons that like people have trouble with the site is just that it's not designed for easy mm -hmm. it's designed for reading. So you see people look at it and they're like, oh, well, you know, it's not designed yeah. for editing. And, and I think it's definitely helping like the new, like what you see is what you get editor. Um, Cause I was like, I like made sure that my students like weren't using like the, the markup style editor and stuff. Yeah. But there's there's barriers there. Anyway. So yeah, just to go off that diagram. I mean, the yeah. issue is they're like outside the circle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all so much. Wonderful conversation. Um uh if you have any other questions, feel free to add. Yeah.